Hi, I'm Ryan Payne with Garage Gurus. Today I have a tech tip for you on a new generation of MagnaRide. So if you know anything about MagnaRide from the past, um, these things have been pulse width modulated and we ran across this one here in our shop uh, in Detroit um, on this 15 Escalade that is not controlled that way. This vehicle is actually broken. Um, customer complaining about how bad it rides. We've done our test drive here and it is terrible. Um, so what we want to do here is the first thing is a visual inspection. So before we get scan tools or scopes or any of that stuff out, we want to get a good visual so we have an idea of what we're looking at, right? We may see something very quickly that points us in the right direction. So let's take a visual of it before we go anywhere else. All right, we have our Escalade in the air here. So we'll do a quick visual inspection and obviously we're going to focus on these struts while we're in the front. And we can take a, a look at this left front here and it's pretty obvious that this thing is just leaking like crazy. So our ma uh, magnetic fluid, magna rheological fluid is leaking out of this thing. And we see the same thing. Right front is much worse, but the left front is definitely bad. You know, I know from experience replacing these things, you know, they can be over a thousand dollars a piece. Um, so there's more work to do, but let's take a look at the, the rear first and see what those look like. All right, so we're back here at the rear of our Escalade. We're gonna get, do a good visual inspection here. And if you'll notice uh, on these shocks back here, they're a little different, right? So this is still a MagnaRide shock, but you also see it's got an airbag on it also. So that's the ALC system or automatic leveling control that this vehicle has also. But what I'm looking for here is I don't see any fluid on the left side or any fluid on the right side uh, shock on this vehicle. So we don't have a problem as far as leakage goes in the rear of this thing. Um, one thing we couldn't catch on camera for you is we made sure when we checked the fronts and when I checked these rears um, and made sure the electrical, electrical connectors at them were all good. So we know the connections are there. Uh, we know the front's leaking. Uh, we're going to have to go farther into that to, to, to find out what to do there. Uh, and our rears seem to be good. Um, so the next thing we're going to do here, I think the next logical step, let's get our scan tool out, let's get connected, and let's actually see if we can command these things and see if they work. We should be able to bounce this vehicle and uh, see a change. So let's get over there and do that. All right, back over here at our scan tool. I went ahead and got our Alto 906 hooked up here. Um, I've already got it plugged in, the VCI is plugged into the vehicle. Um, I've already got it turned on. So let's get through the menus here uh, and see if we've got any codes. So I'm gonna go into diagnosis. I'm gonna go, just go straight to the control unit. All right, I'm gonna find our suspension control module. There it is. Click on suspension control module, let it talk. All right, we're gonna take a look at trouble codes. And there we go. This vehicle actually has no trouble codes, which in my mind makes sense, right? It lines up with a customer story that there are, you know, there's no lights on the dash, no messages. You know, when they hit the, uh, the switch in the cluster there um, for sport or touring, um, it seems to change, at least visually, um, on the cluster, but they don't feel a change in the car. Um, and that, like I said, it lines up because there are no fault codes here. So our visual's done, we know it's leaking, um, but let's go ahead and see if we can find out, even though the rears aren't leaking and the electrical connectors look good, but let's actuate it, let's bi-directionally control those um, using our scan tool and we can actually bounce this thing like I mentioned earlier and let's see what we get. All right, so I have my colleague over there working the scan tool and I'm gonna bounce this thing right now and, and see what it feels like before we actually actuate it. So I kind of push up and down you know, it moves around, you know, feels nice and soft there. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to have my colleague act activate this right rear. And hopefully if it works properly, we're going to thicken up that magnetic fluid, the magnetite fluid, and I'm not going to be able to bounce it. So go ahead and activate it for me there. And you can see I'm putting all my weight on this thing and I can't get it to bounce at all. So that tells me right now, this right rear, which we already inspected and saw that it wasn't leaking, it was connected properly, this thing is working right. So let's go check another one. All right, so I've moved up here to the right front. Um, it's not activated right now by the scan tool. So let's bounce it and see what we get. It's definitely not as soft 
you look at that when I let it go, stop pushing on it, it just kept bouncing. So this doesn't feel right already. And like I said earlier on that test drive, that makes sense to me because it rode about like you just saw. So I'm gonna have my colleague go ahead and activate it and we'll see if we get a change up here in the front. So we're activated and it feels about the same. I let it go and it just continues to bounce there. So, you know, if this was a, a normal shock strut assembly doing this, that tells you it's bad. Uh, you know, and now with these magnet ride struts, we should be able to activate them and change that like we saw in the rear uh, with basically no movement. You know, I've got some weight behind this thing and it's still, still doing the same thing up here in the front. So we know these things are bad. Um, we checked the left front. It does the same as this right front. The left rear was good, um, but we gotta be careful not to sell these things, you know, thousand dollar front struts a piece, right? Could be more, just depends on the market, right? Um, but we don't wanna sell them not knowing whether electrically this system's good. So that's gonna be our next step is to test this system electrically so we can be sure that we can just sell these front struts and we're good and the customer's gonna have the car riding like it should. All right, so we're gonna hook our scope up. I've actually already got my leads connected on this end. So let me show you where we have it connected. We've got our, our yellow lead here is actually connected into the control circuit um, of this left front magnetized strut. And you can also see here, I have my low amp clamp connected around the control circuit uh, of this left front strut. So let's actually go over here, uh, back to our scope, let's actuate it and see if we can verify that this thing is working electrically. All right, so I showed you where the scope leads are connected, right? And I'm gonna show you the scope here in just a minute. But we're not gonna see anything on that scope, right? Unless we tell that control module to, to do something, right, to command it. So I have my Autel scan tool hooked up and we're actually gonna get into this thing and bi-directionally control that left front strut so we can see if we have control. If we're you know, electrically you know, good, uh, the circuit is good between the module, internal to the module, and then between the module to the strut itself. So let's get into the scan tool and work our way to that module. So we've already got this thing specified. I'm gonna get my colleague to turn the ignition on for me. So we'll hit control unit. We'll find our suspension control module. It's right there. We'll let it establish communication. There it is. So what we need to do next is go into an active test, right? We want to be able to turn that strut on. So we'll go to our left front because that's where we're connected. And the engine has to be running. So I'm going to get my colleague here to go ahead and fire it up. It tells you it's got to be running. We hit continue. There we are, it says it's uncommanded at this time. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit active and actually let the control module command that strut. So we hit active, says in progress, and it's showing about a thousand milliamps there, but let's actually take a look at the scope and see what's changed. All right, let's see what we have here uh, on our scope. So this thing is turned on, remember? So our green channel, which is our channel B, is actually that low amp current clamp that you saw. And we're reading, you know, a little over, you know, 1.5 amps, all right? And then if you look at our, on our voltage side, you know, we're around 1.2 or so uh, volts. That tells me that we're actually getting a command from that control module. And what's important about having that amperage there is to show that that thing can carry a load, right? There is, there, there's good continuity from module uh, to component, being the strut here, and then it can carry that load. Yeah, it's not much, right? But it's good there. It's not just doing a resistance test on that wire. Um, we're really doing a good job here diagnostically knowing that everything is good. Uh, let's turn it off, control it a couple times, and watch the change there. So we'll use our Altel to turn it off and there we go we see our values come back down you know we're running about zero or right at zero on our amps and you know real close to zero on the voltage as well so let's activate it one more time so you can see that change again we turn it back on here 
let the scan tool do its job, activate it, and there you go. You see the jump come through, uh, and we're back to where we were. I'm uh, confident now that we can sell these, you know, $1,000, $1,500 struts, um, and we're not going to put those things in and then find out that we have a problem that that circuit or the module can't carry the load there. All right, so I hope you learned some stuff here from this newer generation MagnaRide. Um, it's a little different control, right? We saw it's not pulse width modulated control to those struts. It's more of a solid, just voltage control, turning it on and off to stiffen up those struts. So I hope you enjoyed this tech tip. Hope you learned something from it. For more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, smash the thumbs up, and for more information on Garage Gurus, visit us at garagegurus.tech.